Uh, Brother Waller. Dr. Haney, what I know about the, uh, the youth and people as a whole in our community, there's a trap. And what happens when a trap is set for you, you don't see the trap. Mm -hmm. And once you're captured into the trap, such as I was, mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was in a trap mm -hmm. because the things that I was trapped in was attractive. Mm -hmm. So we have to be mindful of what we do in front of others. Mm -hmm. People were doing things that had my attention mm -hmm. and it caused me to desire to be into what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And after doing so, and then got captured, it was like, this is a wonderful thing. I'm getting high, I'm getting money, I understand the language, but it's one thing that I didn't know. And that is that the trap was so powerful that once you get in it, there's an enemy and you have to do his will. And I was that person that came to my senses as the word of God says, after you had come to your senses and escaped the snare, the trap of the devil, having been taken captive by him, to do his will. Mm -hmm. So once a person is trapped, they're going to do his will. Mm -hmm. Now what we have to do is bring forth great information that's so powerful that they would miss the trap. Mm -hmm. Now after I was released from the bondage that I was in, I was told mm -hmm. to go back to my community in which I had made so effective mm -hmm. in the unrighteous path that people followed me, admired what I was doing, but I was in a trap. Mm -hmm. So I called so many people to be in a trap with me, and he's sending me right back out there mm -hmm. to get the people that's still out there out of the trap. Sure. And that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I've wrote, written a book that's entitled Steer High, mm -hmm. one of the greatest books that I think that can help our communities mm -hmm. and get people back into the swing of mm -hmm. what we really need. And that's my desire, and that's why I'm out in the streets. Uh, mm -hmm. New Way Outreach Ministry is a ministry that reaches out. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be inside of the building. I'm outside where the people are that's hurting, that's crying for help. And my encouragement to the people that's in the church, come out of the building. Mm -hmm. You never know. The and and so the idea of the book, Still High, yeah. is to indicate that you are still high, but yeah. you're high on something mm -hmm. outside yeah. of what uh, yeah. you were generally high on. Yeah. And the experience is greater, Much greater. with being still high yeah. than it was during the earlier parts of your situation. Is that what you're saying? In that's reference what I'm to that? saying, and don't call shit dying. Mm -hmm to keep this high once you learn about it. And it has so much information that the same enemy that captured me don't want nobody to get this book. Mm -hmm. and this book been out since 2013, and I believe Nashville should be flooded with the book. Mm -hmm. If you want to see a difference, you never know until you try it. And, and, and I think some of the problems that we're talking about here are not problems that are limited in terms of the African-American experience and the African-American male, mm -hmm. because uh, in a real sense, getting high in the other sense is a national problem now, which yes, is to yes. say that more people are dying of oh, yeah. cocaine and et cetera oh, than yeah. in automobile accidents and et cetera. And so I think what right. you have there as a book mm -hmm. uh, is something that is very, very valuable and needed yes. in terms of the kind of situations that we find. Not African-American males, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but African-Americans, yeah. other groups and all of them Correct. find the same problems, the same challenges and et cetera. Yeah. And so what we're going to do, uh, Rep. Walker, we're going to take this uh, second commercial break. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start with you doing this last 10 minute segment and then go down. Okay. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. If yeah. they see things, they need a job, they, mm -hmm. need, they yeah. need to have some money. Yeah. And if you had yeah. some way of knowing on Saturday you're going to get 55 or $60 or yeah. whatever, you could right. do something with that. Right. Right. That's true. It, yeah, so but true. Right. It's, it's hard right. telling the teenagers, drop your gang flag, mm -hmm. put the dope down. If you can't give them means to be able to provide, yeah, you that's know, right, right, it's, right, right. Right. it's hard to and do. And that's it. hard for me to understand yeah. that our leaders and yeah. state legislature folks can't seem to understand that that right. it's much more cost effective to do it that way. Yes. Right. Then, but they, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how they go. Um, well, anyway, Reverend, we're going to start with you. Okay. When we come back uh, during this uh, 
second segment, we'll have 10 minutes, and then you, you take about three minutes of it, and you take about three minutes of it, and then we'll do the last couple of minutes, and then All right. I'll end it out for the day. Okay. But this is exactly, I think that this is this, this kind of information is people need to know this. Yeah. I think people know it, but yeah, it needs somebody to come to pull it all together sure, and make, sure. it, make them doubt. understand I mean, that. That's, that's, that's what it's about. It just is. many, so many lives are simply being disrupted Man, and it, destroyed it in terms of what it we're is. doing here. It really is. That's it. It definitely is. And so, Pastor, we'll start with you. All so right. You know, yeah. know what we're you doing. Know, just pick it up and deal with what yeah. it is. Okay. Let's take about three or four minutes. So, then yeah. Then we'll yeah. Us yeah. It's going to be. Let the uh, bishop close us out. All right. <coughs> that what we put together. Okay. Yeah. It would be great. Thirty seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I like this show. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker, uh, Reverend Waller, and uh, Bishop uh, Campbell. Campbell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reverend Campbell. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Hey, I, I, I'm a pastor here, yeah. I'm a reverend that's there, right. Right. and I'm a bishop yeah. down yeah. there. By the time I get to the bishop, yeah. I forget who the yeah. bishop is. Yeah. 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 Next time, Bishop, I'll start with you. But let us start off, uh, uh, Pastor Walker, really by... Uh, making some comments in reference to the topic that we're trying to deal with today. And I think all of us understand the tenor mm -hmm. and the uh, purpose of what we're trying to do here. And let's speak sure. from, it, from that perspective. Okay. You know, uh, Dr. Haney, one, one of the things that uh, Bishop Campbell touched on and that you also offered some feedback into, we talked about the economics of it all. You know, we talked about uh, one of the common denominators where people are, are people are that, that deals with the violence and the gang involvement, the the drug selling, the, the robbing, it's all about economics, it's all about money. We live in America, uh, the land of opportunity, a capitalistic society, uh, where money, money is the, the voice, money speaks, money gets things done. You know, money is right up there with oxygen. You can't, you gotta have it to, to, to survive and live. And, and I think what's happening is, is that we know money is needed. Uh, we say, we go to our youth or, or young men and, and you know, we wanna, talk to them about you know, getting a job, and at the same time, what we're doing, we're asked, because you said something about you know, the government you know, uh, doing something. Mm -hmm. Well, the government has done what the government's gonna do, mm -hmm. that is, they took away the stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they began to take away those things that, that worked. You know, the government took away the, uh, the ability for a young black man to go into the military without having a, a, a high school diploma or, or graduating high school. That was a safety net that kept us out of the school to prison pipeline. You know, we had an option right there to go into the military. You could drop out of school. And a lot of us grew up with the idea and thought in our head, we'd drop out of school and go to the military. But now you, you can't do that either. So, you know, then, you know, you got the summer program that they took away, the community centers that they took away. And, you know, and we look at all this stuff, the feeding, you know, youth in the park, all that kind of stuff that the government provides and, and begin to take away. And then Bush with this faith-based initiative stuff, which is just another mechanism to control folks. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is this, I don't think it's logical for anybody that's really out here trying to help uh, the youth try to build our community or help restructure some things. I don't think it's logical to, to believe that the government's gonna give us something that they're taking away. You know, why would we think that the government, you know, is gonna give us some money to help us when the government is the one taking the money away from us that was just that, that was helping us. So what we have to do, we have to, we're gonna have to create our own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, if we wanna provide a job, we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to create the monies ourselves mm -hmm. and provide the jobs ourselves. Otherwise, mm -hmm. won't no jobs be provided. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll still be trying to get a 501c3, mm -hmm. still begging the government for this, still begging this private foundation for that. Mm -hmm. And then if they give you the money, then, if, and then you're starting to make a difference, they start seeing lives change, they start seeing growth and stuff and development and stuff like that. Then they gonna, the next time you apply, re, uh, submit for that grant, they're not gonna give you the money because they don't, they don't want to see you succeed. But now if you're, not, if, if, if you're not doing anything, you're not producing no results, but you're just looking good on paper, oh, they'll keep on giving you money. You know what I'm saying? But if, you, if you're showing some positive results and you're really impacting the lives of these people, they're gonna pull that money back because they don't want it to happen. You got the privatization of the prison system here going on and you got, they 
asking the states to guarantee me 90 percent occupancy mm -hmm. and you and you think the state going to give you some money to mess up that 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 a uh, contract they got no they're not going to do that so we if we're going to do something then we got to create our own monies mm -hmm. and we got to come together you know if you want to change a community you got to buy it you just mm -hmm. you, you got to go in and buy it. Mm -hmm. you see it happening all over town mm -hmm. 12 south used to be 12th avenue south when when folks went in there and bought it they turned it into 12th south mm -hmm. i mean we could do the same thing mm -hmm. if enough people would just come together and pool resources you mm -hmm. know there's industries out here if if i stand into a, in a in a room full of young black males that's selling dope I'm not, I shouldn't go, I'm not going to go in there talking to them about go get you a job because mm -hmm. these are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I, I need to talk that to them about That is their how, job. Yeah. That's the only job Absolutely. that they find right. available and but that's see, the job that they work. And that's yeah. it. They're entrepreneurs at heart. So you got to talk to them about entrepreneurship. You got to show them, show me a way, let me, show me a way I can make some money. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Some real money out here. Show me how I can own my own business mm -hmm. and how I can employ some people myself. That's what we have to do mm -hmm. and stop begging the government for stuff that their government ain't trying to give us. Mm -hmm. Brother sure. Waller. Dr. Haney, what I like about an opportunity to reach out is that the gift that we have, a lot of us have gifts and don't really know how to exercise it. And when we do and get captured, we can no longer pursue it. That happened to me. So I have a chapter in my book called Forsaken Talent. And then after that, the chapter next to it is called Out of Control. And if you don't mind, I'll give you a little reading of it, just a little mm -hmm. dab. Uh, out of control. This is what used to happen to me years ago before I ever thought about any book writing. Mm -hmm. I can remember people asking me, Ricky, what college are you going to? Or who is recruiting you? My answer was always the same. College. Mm -hmm. Why would I go to someone's college and take a chance on breaking my ankle? Mm -hmm. I am making more money now than I would going to somebody's college. Mm -hmm. That's how I used to talk back then. And I said, how